guys, I'm BTC. This is the Minecraft server. All right, so last time I was working on the cow farm area, and after I finished recording, I figured out what it was that was causing my problems with the farm. And that is we're in the wrong snapshot. So in this snapshot that the server is running right now, the hitboxes for the baby cows is the same as the adult cows, which is why they're not being pushed into that area over there. However, in the new snapshot, let me try to get up here. In the new snapshot, they will be forced out into this little canal where they'll come down here and then they will be killed by the uh, lava blade. So it will work, but not in the snapshot. And we can't really upgrade right now because it causes some pretty, pretty serious lag issues for some people. So until they get that sorted out, the server will stay at the snapshot that we're at right now. Now I did, for the most part, finish this. And I brought all my chickens over here. So what's gonna happen here is there's going to be a hopper right there. And I'm going to have it so that this hopper can be turned on or off. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because otherwise the cart down below will constantly be full of eggs and it's just going to create issues uh, because what will happen is the storage area will eventually just be nothing but eggs. So, yeah, no, don't want that. All right, so I think what I'm going to actually do today is I think think I think I'm going to probably tell you a little bit of a little bit of story time story time with BTC and in the meantime since I have no ability to do any sort of meaningful task and tell a story at the same time for at least for at least the time being you know maybe I'll get used to it but I'm going to tear down this ugly monstrosity. Now, I know a lot of people wanted to know about why I joined the army. And I'm not going to tell that story this time. <laughs> Sorry. That's kind of a sad, depressing story. And yeah, I don't, you know, I already told a, a, a sad, depressing story about, uh, you know, getting teased in school and whatnot. So I don't want to do another back-to-back -back sad depressing story because then my channel will turn into sad panda channel and I don't want that oh oops I gotta use the uh, I gotta use the um, silk touch one for this stuff so that way I don't have to smelt it again so the story I'm gonna tell today or the the little bit of info I'm gonna talk about is uh, is basic training so it's gonna be it's gonna be army related but it's not going to be you know why I joined it'll be more you know some of the stuff that went on while I was in the army so basic training for those of you that don't live in the states basic training is what the US military calls our uh, entry level training when you go into the military. And I'm sure many other nations probably call it basic training or something similar, but just in case you didn't know. So anyways, everybody has to go into basic training when you join the military, no matter what branch it is. Now, depending on the branch you join will determine how long it is. Now, for the Air Force, actually, see, it might have changed. It might be longer now. I'll have, to, I'll have to check. But back when I joined, the 
The time for the Air Force was only six weeks. The Navy and the Army was eight weeks. And the Marines is or was uh, 12 weeks. Now, if you were Army Infantry, then the time was, I, I want to say, 16 weeks because it was combined, your, your basic training and your AIT. Um, don't ask me what AIT stands for. I can't remember. It's like maybe it's Advanced Individual Training or something like that. I can't remember. Anyways, so I was in the Army for eight years. Six of them were active duty and two of them were in the reserves. So <laughs> I guess I guess I'll just talk about basic uh, basic training stuff because there's this so much so much uh, that I did in the army. And I do have a lot of funny stories. I, I hope I can remember most of them because I mean I've I've been out of the army entirely for I think five years now. So, yeah, it's been it's been a while, and I just did the so yeah thing, which I hate. Basic training. I remember. <laughs> I remember I. At the time, I didn't have much money, when I was joining, so I had kind of somewhat long hair. I uh, I didn't have the money to spend on a haircut, and that kind of goes into the whole um, story why I joined and yada yada. But I'll talk about that another time, like I said. So, anyways, I had kind of long hair, and I was kind of worried. I'm like, man, I am gonna get picked on right out of the gate, and when when I say picked on, the drill sergeants will actually, you know, they, they'll they target certain people. People that stand out, you get targeted, and then they will make your life a living nightmare for the next eight weeks. And the trick with basic training, for anybody that's thinking of joining, the trick with basic training is you do not want your drill sergeants, drill instructors, or whatever they call them, because all the branches call them something different, you do not want them to even know your name. You know, you want it to be the opposite of Cheers, where everybody knows your name. No, you don't want anybody to know your name. Because if they know who you are, it means you've been messing up. And it means you are going to have a bad time. Uh, you're going to have a... How's that, how's that South Park thing go? Yeah, you're going to have a bad time. Something like that. I think I'm messing it up. I don't think I actually ever saw that episode. Anyways, so you don't want to do anything to, to stand out. So just keep that in mind. Now, when I when I first joined, I remember I remember the the plane ride there. Uh, I went to Fort Benning, Georgia, which is where the infantry trains. Now, I was not infantry. I was what's called a information system operator analyst. It's a fancy title for computer nerd. And uh, I believe the MOS at the time was 74 Bravo. And then later on, they changed it to 25 Bravo. But so that's what I was, a 74 Bravo, then a 25 Bravo. And all the jobs in the military have um, have those those identifiers. So I remember being on the flight there, and <laughs> we got there, and I had no idea what to expect. I thought it was going to be like as soon as you get there, you know, they they start in on you like right away, but. That's actually not how it was. So when I arrived, you know, they were kind of like, all right, hey, get off, you know, get off the, when I got to the airport and, and landed and then there was a bus that picked up a bunch of us and stuff. And then, um, 
they're like, uh, all right, get off the, you know, the drill sergeants were like, get off the bus. Uh, actually, they weren't even drill sergeants. I didn't even realize this at the time, but um, drill sergeants have kind of a funny hat. And these were just uh, regular sergeants. So they, you know, get off the bus and everybody's like hurrying and, and whatnot. And um, I get in there and, and so they make everybody shave. And then they bring in uh, barbers and everybody gets, you know, buzz cut. One of the most uncomfortable buzz cuts ever because the, the guys that they bring in, the barbers, that they bring in to actually give you the haircuts, uh, they they don't care. <laughs> like you know how you know how when you go to uh, a uh, a barber shop or really any any sort of service related uh, business, the idea is to make the customer comfortable and enjoy it. Yeah, no, they don't care. They don't care in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Now, these barbers are civilians. They actually used to have military barbers, but they got rid of them. So these barbers are civilians, but they don't care. So they just, like, grab your head, and they're just, like, twisting you around. Like it's like you know, like they're palming a basketball or a melon or something. They're just, like, uh, you know, tw uh, twisting your head around and just, you know, grinding your head with the damn... Um, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the electric shaver things. So, worst haircut ever. And I was, uh, I was kind of, like I said, I was kind of worried. I'm like, oh man, I hope they didn't, you know, I don't get in trouble for having, you know, somewhat long hair, but it really didn't matter. So then, you know, they send us to this, uh, oh, my inventory's full. They send us to this little, I don't know how to, how to say it. They're not really, they weren't really trailers, but they're kind of like mobile, mobile homes, sort of. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to explain. They're not very sturdy buildings, put it that way. And like, I, I thought, I'm like, I might, you know, what's going on here? And then finally, you know, some of the other, um, they're called hold unders. They explained it to me. This, like, this is not basic training yet. You are not in basic training. This is the hold under station. And man, I wish I had my feed the beast chip pack. This is a hold under station. And what that means is that when you get there, you aren't put into basic training like right away you're put into this hold under station where everybody just kind of you know chills out and you wear your pt clothes uh physical training clothes which at the time was you know just basically kind of like sweatpants and stuff and you just basically did nothing for however long you were a hold under now some people were a hold under for a day or two some people were there for like weeks weeks or a month or more as a hold under and there were different reasons why you might be a hold under but i was there and i was a hold under for about six days i think six or seven days it was almost a week because i remember my basic training being about um about nine weeks long uh and that included the the hold under um period I gotta get rid of more stuff. Actually, I could just stack those and get rid of the sign. So I was a hold under for like a week, roughly. Now, you weren't really in basic training, but you still had to kind of do army stuff, sort of. It was like kind of like kind of like preschool for <laughs> for the army you know it wasn't real school but what did i just i just picked up that wood it wasn't real you know basic training but you know it was getting you ready for it so i remember one day we were outside and this is still in hold under you know i'm not even technically in basic training yet and i remember we were all lined up in like a, a formation and what a formation is 
is basically just when everybody is in lines. So I was the... Oh man, I can't even remember what it's called. Is it Point Man, I think? Or Point or something? I can't remember. It's been so long. Anyways, the person that is in the front line all the way to the right. Okay, that is the person that leads uh, the speed for the march. You are supposed to keep in step with that person. So whatever whatever that person is, whatever speed that person is going, that's how fast everybody else has to march. Because everybody to his left uh, stays in step with him and everybody behind him uh, or behind those lines stays in step with the people in front of them and, and to their right. So that's where I was. Now, someone did something dumb. I don't even remember what it was. And the drill sergeant says, uh, what did he say? Uh, um, oh, was it? Uh, half, oh, half right. Man, can you, I, I I was actually asked to be a drill sergeant, and I can't remember the commands. That's kind of bad. So he said half right face. He goes half right, which is the preparatory command, and then he says face, which is the command of execution. So when you say right face, you turn to the right. When you say half right face, you turn kind of at like an angle. So um, just to give you an idea, uh, like, let's say uh, these were the lines, by the way, of people, each block. I was this person right here, so facing forward. Now, when he says half right face, uh, all right, well, I know what that is, so I half right. So rather than going full right, you do half right, so you're at the angle. And there's a very, very good reason why they do this, and nobody likes to hear it. And any time you ever hear this in your military career, like if you're in a formation and the uh, drill sergeant or the commander or the first sergeant or platoon, whoever is in charge, if they say half right face, because uh, you know what's coming up. And this was the first time I'd ever heard it, so I didn't know what was coming up. So he says half right face. So half right face and I turn and I'm at the angle and then he says something that I had no idea what he was saying which is the command that everybody hates he said front leaning rest position move and I'm just standing there <laughs> like a dope I'm just standing there staring straight I'm like I don't know what this command means like I have no idea and here's the thing if I was like back here, it wouldn't. I would have been able to see what everybody else was doing, and I could have just followed it. But I was the guy right here, so I'm like, um, I don't know what's going on. I'm just kind of like standing here, and he's like, "Private, private, what are you doing?" And I'm just st <laughs> just standing here. I'm like, "Private, you, like." what are you doing? And I looked, and I looked at him, and he's like, looking at me like, like, man, you are stupid. And then I look, and I see everybody else, and they're in the front leading rest, which is the position you get in to do push-ups. So I'm like, oh, that's what we're doing. So then I, I get down into the front leading rest, and then he starts doing the cadence, you know, uh, Oh, wow, man, I can't even remember what the, the cadence was. What is it? Was it, was it a four count? One, two, three, one. One, two, three, two. Yeah, I think it was usually a four count. And so what that means is you would start with, uh, so you would go down, that was one, and then push up, that was two, then down, that's three, and then up, that's four or one. So a four count exercise, you're actually doing it twice. So yeah, like my second day in the army and I wasn't even in, I wasn't even in, uh, what do you call it? Um, 
the real basic training yet. I was just in that stupid hold under thing. And already I'm like, oh, I am like, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting singled out here. And this is not going to be good because now he, you know, now there's, uh, a guy who messed up. And, um, when, when you're that person, you are not going to have a good time. But thankfully, um, I did, you know, I quickly learned from that. And on top of that, that guy wasn't actually even one of the drill sergeants. He's he's only at the, the hold under place. So he didn't actually go to the actual basic training area with me. So, you know, there was no harm, no foul because he, you know, he only saw me for a couple of days and he really didn't even know who I was. So... Uh, do I have anything that I can get rid of? I can get rid of, uh, another rack. And let me put some of this stuff in here. Get rid of that. And what's in here? Let's put the, those blocks in there. Yeah, let's get rid of this stuff too. I don't think I really need this right now. And the chest, some cobblestone, some of that, some of that. All right, I can't wait till I finish the storeroom. So yeah, I I I learned very quickly. So yeah, that like, oh, ugh, stop doing the so yeah thing. <clears throat> Got to compose myself after the so yeah incidents. That's basically how I started, like, this the the second day that I was there. I had already kind of, uh, like, pointed myself out. And then, this this will be the last thing that I tell you uh, about this. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about, well, I'll talk, I'll finish out the hold under story. Anyways, so the guys, and this was, and it's funny because it's like, it's a perpetual joke. Like it's a perpetual taunt. I don't. I don't know how else to say it. Every single person that's there, okay, for the hold under phase, they get, well, they get sort of tricked. I mean, not everybody falls for it. Um, I, you know, I certainly didn't fall for it, but it, it just. It's funny that it, it carries with. If I can. How many years and years and years has has it carried? And what I'm talking about is the exaggeration of the different things that you have to have taken care of. And what I mean by that is, that was a terrible jump. What I mean by that is, you have to get a lot of shots, a lot of different vaccinations and things like that. And you actually have to, uh, I think, all right, so let, let me, let me, let me draw you a picture, okay? The room that you go in to get shots has a rubber floor. And that is because people pass out so much. And they just, they get their shots and then they, whoop, boom, hit the ground. So that's why the floor is rubber, so people aren't breaking teeth. When you walk into this room, okay? There's a nurse on your left side and your right side. They both, you know, there's no, there's no, you know, when you go to the dog, remember what I said uh, about the business thing and the haircut? There's none of that. There is none of that. When you go in there, you know, if you go to the nurse at your doctor's, she should generally be nice to you, okay? Yeah, no, not here. Not here. When you go in there, they'll be like, all right, Try not to flinch. And then they both jab you in the arm, both arms, at the same time. So you get stabbed both, because this thing is like an assembly line, all right? It's not meant, it's not meant to be a pleasant experience. It's meant to do it as quickly as possible. Oh, I gotta keep chicken nugget in there. It's not meant to be a pleasant experience. It's meant to be as efficient and as quick as possible because there are hundreds, hundreds of guys that are coming in and out through uh, this facility all the time. 
So, uh, anyways, so you go and you get, what, why did I just do that? You go and you get your shots, and then you, you take a couple of steps, and there's two more people that jab you in the arms. And then you gotta go over to another place, and they draw some blood. And this is all in like this one little room uh, with the rubber floor. And they draw some blood, and you know there are guys that are like laying down on the floor in the corner because they, you know, they're ready to pass out and stuff, or they did pass out. And then you have to get your final shot, which is in the buttocks. And no, I'm I'm not exaggerating. They give you a shot in the top of your uh like right like right at the top of your 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 butt cheek <laughs> and it's not that pleasant um it makes it kind of difficult to sit down a little bit and it's uh <laughs> yeah anyways so here's the thing the 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 jokes uh the the taunting the the whatever that i was talking about earlier this is where this all comes into play because prior to going into that room, the other guys who are hold unders, who a couple of days ago already went in there, they know exactly what's going to happen. But the guys before them told them that they were going to have to get a special shot. And this is now this is for for pretty much for guys only. They tell you that you have to get a square shot by by the I'm going to try to keep this as as kid friendly as possible. <laughs> if if it's even it's not really possible, but I'll I'll do my best. They tell you you have to get a square shot. So you know how most shots like the needles are circular? Well, a square shot would be way more painful than a circular one because it wouldn't really just it would just be more painful okay so they tell you that you have to get a square shot in the male no-no place okay and ha you know a bunch of guys actually believe this and you know most most of them know that it's fake but um they uh <laughs> they do um they do uh somewhat believe it some of the guys and i just think it's funny because that joke that taunting or whatever has been perpetuated for so long like years and years and years and every single new uh group of hold unders gets told by the previous group and who was told by the previous group who was told by the previous group and it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on and on and i bet you i bet you even now if i were to go there that someone would be making that that joke that someone would be telling you you have to get the square shot in no no place and um it just it's funny because some guys are like actually like panicking about it they're like oh my god i don't want to i don't want to get that and of course it's not true but it's just there to scare you so anyways this actually ah, i still got some more hold under stories but um yeah so they they tell you you gotta you gotta get uh, that, and everybody's like all or like a bunch of people are like all nervous. But even though that doesn't happen, it's still kind of bad because that that uh, room you go in where they just give you you know the whole bunch of shots that it's still it's not pleasant. I gotta tell you. But so that that's just that's not even and at this point that isn't even basic training. This is still hold under phase. So I still got, oh man, I got lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. And I, 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 and I think if I, while I'm actually talking about this stuff, I think I'm going to start remembering some of the stories. And uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of them. And they're, they're doozies, I'll tell you. I even, I, I mean, I even got some more hold under stories, so... But, anyways, alright, so, mission accomplished. I actually did something. I knocked down that ugly, ugly tower. And I need to now make something more resembling a, a house here. I mean, eh, maybe I'll still make a tower, but I'll probably put it 
back here. So maybe I'll do that next time. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault. Hey guys, you might know that I run a Minecraft custom map making build team and we are currently looking for new people. So if you're good at building, making textures, or animating with programs like Blender or Maya, why don't you apply? You can go to blamethecontroller.com or click the link in the description.